Welcome back, part six of building the Prometheus. As previously described in part five, I'm going to be filling in this area of the engine pods, the engine cowling. It's a detail which I previously described, which I come to the conclusion that it's too heavy and it doesn't necessarily fit in with the general aesthetic of the model in its uh, in its design. Yeah, it was a lot of work putting in these uh, scribing lines but I've come to the conclusion that it's better without and by filling in this the model will pretty much look like how the finished CGI rendering looked like in the film because if you study the film carefully especially when the Prometheus collides with the juggernaut or the engineer's ship if you if you motion capture or or freeze frame you can see that the engine engine pods doesn't have this detail it's it's generally quite flat on this compound surface so that's what we're going to be doing so I will be using milliput super fine white it's a it's a good version of the product it's super fine as uh, described it's almost a porcelain like quality once it's cured once it's sat and sanding it's really really quite a, a pleasure so I'll be using it for its super fine quality I'll be using it for it being easy to sand sculpt and shape and also uh, psychologically it will blend in with the, the color of the resin so basically psychologically speaking it's not going to be too jarring it's 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 not going to be upsetting in terms of me thinking about what I've done and the mistake that I made in inscribing these units so so it will it will ease my mind a bit and I won't be so hard on myself in terms of uh, looking looking at my error basically it's not going to be poking me in the eye so often so so once once that's done and cleaned up we'll be able to progress with the rest of the build so let's see let's see how we so progress looking here we've got two parts of the epoxy putty one slightly off-white the other is pure white so it's it's an even amount of the putty so we want it to be an even amount so it isn't too soft and it doesn't go off too quickly but that being said this when it is mixed has a relatively short amount of time in which to apply it to the model it goes off how can I say a bit quicker than the other milliputs so I'm going to start blending as you can see here Use the noise and of the gloves and the uh, putty, it's quite sticky. I normally do this with my bare hands, but as we're filming today, I do not necessarily want to get this all over the camera. The aim of mixing the super fine white is not to overdo it, 
because the more you need it, the quicker it's going to it's going to go off. And we do not want that. It's got to be reasonably soft so you can knead it into those areas where it needs filling or the areas which I've scribed. I'm trying to get this into focus. Excuse me. So I've given that good old kneading. I think that's as much as we should uh, as much as we should do really before it starts getting really hard. Or going off, I should say. Now this isn't necessarily going to be easy because it's going to be white on white. Now, now what am I doing? Just bear with me a moment and I'll be right back. Right back. That's interesting. Oops. Okay. Shall we attempt this on camera? Can we attempt this on camera? I'm not sure that we can. But this is what I'm doing. I'm just going across the surface of the model with the putty. Just, just getting it in every bit that I've scribed. Don't know if we can see that. Can you see that? <laughs> That's not an easy job. Might have to do some of this off camera because it's a bit awkward. But I think you've got the the gist of what I'm doing. So I'm going to do the rest of this off camera because it's just a little bit too awkward to achieve else. So we will see you hopefully in a little while. Okay, so I've applied the mini put. It has been roughly applied to the model surface. What I will do now is finesse the application. Milly put at this stage is uh, water soluble. You can use water to smooth out the rough rough surfaces or to contour. It's really quite it's really quite a pliable, diverse medium in that context when you add water to it. But the thing you've always got to remember while using Milly put is that the more you work it, the more you hasten the setting or the curing time. It cures quite quickly. 
So basically what I'm trying to say is the more you work it, the quicker it goes off, the quicker the, the epoxy cures and stiffens. So in that respect you have a very, very limited amount of time to finesse and contour the application without sanding. So the more you can do while it's wet, the less you have to do in terms of sanding when it's dry. So what I'm going to do now off camera is finesse as much as I can with water and then we'll show you how that looks before letting things stand. So we'll be right back after that. See you in a bit. Since I've applied the mini butt. Looking at each unit you can see how I ran out of time in terms of making it nice and neat on on one. I've managed to contour and finesse the medium while it was wet. So as I was saying, as you work it, it actually goes off. The epoxy resin begins to cure and it cures very very quickly. So I'm going to have a bit of a job to make this neat through sanding. So that's my job. It's going to take a wee while to do this, so hopefully we'll be back in a little while. Right then, where did we leave off? Yes, we left off prepping the engine units. A lot's happened since uh, part one or part six because this really technically speaking is part two. But let's try and focus here. If you want, you know you want to. So, in part one of part six, we saw me filling in the plated panelling that I had scribed. Well, that panelling was just simply too heavy. I take it back, actually, with regards to the surface detail on these engine parts. There is a tiled surface, but it's nowhere near as prominent as I made it. I'm not the best person in the world in terms of scribing. Having filled in the milliput, however, I've discovered that it's left a faint trace of the work that I had done. Now, that to me seems really quite acceptable. I don't think we could pick that up on camera. Let's have a look. Gonna happen. I don't think it's going to happen. Oh. Right, there we go. If I tilt it that way, you can just about faintly make out those markings. Now, it is my hope when I apply the primer that this detail will remain especially with subsequent layers of paint and other applications, so I'm hoping yeah, this detail will remain. Also, what I've started doing here is installing the engine's intakes. I can't seem to focus this tonight. 
of it because I am Ted B, so I've been working on a model, another model all day. So, well that's been kicking me in the rear end. But uh, we might do a video about that another time, but not today. But yes, here I've started to insert those intakes. Well, we are just not we're just not on the ball tonight in terms of our focusing, are we? Absolutely not. Not very good at all. I'm not sure if this is the light washing things out. It might be that as well. Look really carefully. There are lines in the polystyrene plastic that I've applied to the resin. I've also applied some grey or green mini put to the engine cowling. Now these have a layered vent effect, which I'm going to hand scribe, which is <laughs> which is something. <laughs> which is something that's not very easy to be perfectly honest it's 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 difficult so what i might do is actually mark it out in pencil then go with the pencil so i've got some sort of guidance but yeah these engines are really really looking good i have to do something with regards to detailing this section then because when it looks pretty bland. I'm not quite sure what to do. Although, that having been said, just let me reach over here a minute. Can anyone guess what this is? No? No one has an idea? It looks like an engine part, doesn't it? Or the insert of an engine part. But it's not. It's a good old fashioned off a fruit juice top. Um, yeah, fruit juice top. So um, I looked at this the other day when my wife had brought them home in the shopping and I thought, oh hello, this looks interesting. That might work as an engine insert for the, pre for the Prometheus because in spite of my research and looking at uh, Ben Proctor's work. I've not seen an interior, an interior detail in terms of the engine. So, what I thought about doing was perhaps hollowing this out, or hollowing it out in part, and then inserting this inside, which would make very, well quite decent, decent interior for um, the engine unit. You can, let me what, you can let me know what you think. But I think that actually looks quite decent. I, you know, I'm really, really happy with that. The only thing that annoys me slightly is hollowing this out because once I've remove that detail, there is absolutely no going back. No going back whatsoever. So if I hollow that out, that means I am I am stuck if they should go south. But there's something else. Something else I want to show you good people online. Now this what I'm about to show you, you might think that I'm well quite insane. Uh, let me show you regardless. Now uh, this being an original Fantastic Plastics model, this is the bridge module that the kit originally came with. 
as uh, you can see it's uh, a solid block of resin with some detailing with regards to the canopy which is underneath the carapace of the Prometheus. Now, as I'm a glutton for punishment and I'm not happy unless I'm suffering, let's be honest, this is, this is oh, what, what I did to resolve, resolve my uh, itching to do something intricate and, well, let's see what I've done. Can you see what that is? Yes. Well, this is the beginnings of my new, new command module or bridge. I mocked this up in paper, coated it with with sellotape to give it some rigidity. That was Mark 1. This is Mark 2 on a stiffer piece of paper. And the tape simulates, simulates glass. Yeah. Originally, I was going to work this out in brass. The brass turned out to be way, way, way too stiff. You know, I just couldn't get those sharp corners in. Everything was rounding off when I didn't need it to because I need straight, straight right angles and other angles that uh, are a multifaceted aspect of uh, this part of the model, part of the ship's design. Here is a Mark III prototype. This is actually made out of a thin, very thin piece of styrene stock. As you can imagine, it's really quite a chore to cut out such tiny, tiny bits of plastic by hand to make the frame. But made it, I have. So just let me... Oh, can I reach under there? Come on, do it. Do it. Nope. I'm going to have to lift her up and take this out. Okay. Now, you might look at this. think I've come gone completely round the twist. But this is the final part, or well, this is the final iteration of my command module. Because the model itself has quirks in it, I had to make this with quirks in it so it would fit where I needed to fit which is in that cavity there so that's all been drilled out with a Dremel and of course it's going to be backlit There's more work to be done on this. 
I don't know how I'm going to oh, go on, drop it. Oh, it's only taken two days to 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 draw out, cut and glue together and reinforce. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to insert glass or if I'm going to insert glass at all. One thing I do know, and one thing I do know that I'm capable of, is that I'll be cutting out some brass shutters. The shutters that you see in the beginning of Prometheus as they reach their destination 233, or shall I say LB 233. Now, fantastic plastic, in my absence, has re-released this kit. It's in flight mode only, so it doesn't have that posability as this one, the, the original, the, the original one. Also, I've been weeding up. The new kit has a vac form transparent bridge. I'd be interested to see what that looks like. If I'd known about that before, I would have contacted, I would have contacted Fantastic Plastic to see what this particular part looked like. But I think I'm, I think I'm going to stick with this now. I'm quite happy with it. You can see all the way through to the front of the module. That's a bit quirky there, but you won't see that once it's embedded or mounted into the model. You won't see that at all. I did fancy trying to make it straighter, but I thought, well, no. I'm just fighting against the model in that respect, and uh, I don't think I'm going to particularly win on that foot. Oops. But yes, an absolute glutton for punishment, and that's why I thought I'd do it. My wife is absolutely amazed. Actually, she's a little bit gobsmacked. <laughs> she thinks I'm insane. have to detail in there, have to create a little flight deck. But anyway, that's that. I don't think there's much more to much to report tonight. Go on, shake everything. And we will be getting back on the horse, so to speak. And uh, we're going to get you finished before the summer's out. engine modifications and uh, <coughs> insane cockpit canopies or command module canopies. This is the Prometheus signing off. We'll see you in part seven. Bye for now. Right, let's have a last look at this. This is how the Prometheus looks with the command module in place. Actually, I was thinking while tidying this up, it could be screen printed, not screen printed, it could be 3D printed. That's something for fantastic plastic to think about. 3D print your cockpit command module. 
but uh, in a time old tradition of the mine the old fashioned way by making it from scratch. But yeah, it's pretty neat looking, isn't it? Even better once it's all painted up. But there we go. This is Prometheus signing off.